I recreated Shad CN's documentation in under 30 minutes by using this tool called Starlight, which makes writing documentation incredibly easy. This is built by the same people that made Astro, which is an incredible tool that I absolutely love. And as you can see, comparing these two documentations side by side, they look almost identical. Obviously there's styling differences between the two, but that's because I wanted to use Starlight's features out of the box with absolutely no custom components and no custom CSS. As you can see, I'm able to get pretty much exactly the same documentation as I can get in Shad CN. And as you can see, some of the components that are built into the Starlight are actually even better than what you get in Shad CN. Now, obviously in those 30 minutes, I didn't recreate every single page. I only did a couple pages, but if we compare those pages to each other, you can see that they implement a lot of the same functionality and features that you get inside of Shad CN, but it's all built out of the box and it's entirely customizable if you wanna make it look better. But like I said, in my particular use case, I wanted to make this as bare bones as possible by customizing nothing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what Starlight is, why I think it's really incredible and how you can use it to make really simple docs or really complex docs and both situations are incredibly easy. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the first thing I wanna say is this video is not sponsored or anything like that. I just found this tool, really liked it, tried it out and found it was incredibly easy to use. So Starlight, like I said, is built by Astro. It's relatively new within the last year or two. So not super new, but still relatively new. And if we go to the getting started page for this, actually getting started with a project is super easy. You just run this one single NPM command. It's gonna ask you a couple questions and you're pretty much all the way there that you need to do. Now, if you wanna use Tailwind, which is what I ended up doing, even though I didn't actually write any CSS, you can see here to add Tailwind, all you need to do is come up here and just run this one command and it's going to get started with a Tailwind version instead. And when you run that, you're gonna get some code that looks very similar to what I have on the left side here. This is actually the final version that I have, but inside of here, you're gonna get this source folder as well as this Astro config right here. And this is pretty much where all the content for your entire application goes. So in this config file, this is where you configure certain basic things like what your title is, maybe where your GitHub links or Twitter links or different stuff like that. If we come up here and I just expand this page a little bit, you can see up in the top right corner, I have that GitHub link which is linking directly to this config file. And then the most important part is this sidebar section, which essentially customizes what's going to be on your sidebar. So if again, if I expand this, you can see my sidebar has my guides and my components. We have my guides and we have my components. So it's really easy to add individual custom pages or just say, get all of the different files from this one folder and put them inside my documentation. So the configuration is relatively easy and how you actually write out your documentation is using Markdown or MDX, which is Markdown, but you can use JSX, React, Astro, Vue, whatever component styles you want inside of it. So the way we get to that is we open up this content folder and inside the docs here is going to be all of our different documentation. This index one is just for our homepage. So if I go to my homepage, you can see all of this, which is just the default boilerplate. I didn't change it at all. That's going to be built with all these different components. And every component you see here is actually built into Starlight. As you can see, I'm importing it directly from Starlight. Nothing is custom in this other than the actual documentation. Now, if we go to this example guide, I'm just gonna open up this example guide. You can see it's got a .md extension. This means it's a markdown file, and this is the most basic type of markdown file you can get. You just have a few different headings, some text inside of there. You can see everything pops up on the side, and you can see by default, I gave this a title, which is example guide, which shows up at the top of the page, and I gave it a description, which is useful for the HTML description of the page. It doesn't actually show up on the page, but if someone is like searching for something in Google, this is the description that's gonna show up in those metadata tags. You also notice I have previous and next buttons, which allow me to go to previous pages, or they allow me to go to the next page. These are just built into the theme that is provided by Starlight by default. You can customize and change this however you want. Now that's pretty much what the basic version is gonna look like when you install this, but obviously you want to add your own pages and your own documentation, and doing that is incredibly easy. Generally, you're probably gonna to wanna to use something like MDX, and that's because MDX allows you to actually use components inside of your markdown. Now, all of these components, again, are built-in components and they're all written in Astro. But the nice thing about Astro is you can use Astro, Vue, React, Svelte, whatever your favorite front-end library is, they're all going to work with Starlight because Astro is built in a way that works with any type of component library that you want to. Generally though, I try to write my components in Astro, especially for something like this on documentation because you really don't need super complex interactive components for the most part. Now, if we go to that installation page, you can see at the top here, I have this card grid boom, straight from Astro. Then I have a bunch of code here, just you know, normal stuff inside of Markdown before I finally get to a section that's all about code. And you can see I have a code component that does that, or I could even write this inside of triple back ticks like this, say JSX as the type. And then I could write some code inside of here. And if I give that a quick save and I make sure I run my development version of my site, because right now I'm on the preview version and we just come in here, refresh our page. 
we'll see that that code will also show up right here. So you can write your code in multiple different ways. It really doesn't matter. This is just scraping the iceberg of some of the cool features though. If we actually look at the Next.js documentation, which I copied over pretty much directly, and we pull that file up, you notice there's a lot of really cool stuff going on inside of here. For one, we have this step section, which allows us to create this numbered list, one, two, three, four, and so on. And we were able to nest different things inside of there, and it looks really good. We can copy all of the different code examples that we have. As you can see in here, I'm using the code tag, and I'm also using these triple back ticks tag. So I'm using both of them interchangeably, depending on what needs I have. And you can see, I just have all this different stuff. And then finally, all the way down here, I have a file tree, which again is a built-in component that gives you this awesome looking file tree that you can expand and collapse. And this is useful for pretty much any type of documentation you can think of. So again, all of this is really cool and awesome that it's all built in. We even have a button section here that you can again toggle between preview and code. And if I go to the actual file for that, you can see inside of here, I'm just using a bunch of these different tabs with tab items. And they allow me to tab between these two different versions of the exact same thing, relatively straightforward. Also, if I just expand this a little bit more, you'll see that I get a second sidebar showing up on the right hand side. And this second sidebar allows me to toggle around all the different headings on my page. And I can customize exactly what this looks like. But again, everything by default is just using the default styles in Starlight because I didn't want to change anything because I wanted to see how easy it was to create something that worked and looked kind of like Shad CN without doing a ton of custom CSS. So hopefully I've shown you that actually getting started with this is really easy and you get a ton of stuff built out of the box. For example, I have light and dark themes that I can toggle between. I also have the ability to search. This only works in the production version though. So let me actually start up my production version of the site. I'll come over here and refresh. And if I come in here, I can search for a button, for example, and now I get every single instance where my page references buttons. For example, I can go to the installation of my button component and boom, there we go, we have it. And if I have a more complex documentation site, obviously this searching will allow me to search for a lot more complex things. For example, if I search for Next.js, you can see I get my Next.js related stuff. Now, the really nice thing about this is if I wanted to change any of the built-in components inside of this documentation site, it's incredibly easy. For example, let's say I wanted to change what this theme select looks like. Well, to do that, all I would need to do is go to my config file and inside of here, I have a special section I can call components. And inside of here, I can re overwrite any component I want. So if I want to overwrite my theme select, I can come in here and I can just pass in a path to a file that's going to overwrite that. So let's go from our source folder. We'll go inside of a components folder and we'll just call this theme.astro because we're just going to use a simple astro file. There we go. Give that a quick save. Let's create that file. So inside of my source, I'm going to have a components folder. And inside of here, I'm going to have theme.astro. And in here, I'm just going to return a div that says theme picker. Close off that div. Make sure all of this is lined up perfectly. So it's just going to be a div that says theme picker. So now if I come over, I'm going to open up my development version because obviously I want to be able to see these changes. I'm going to refresh my page over here. And now you can see if I actually zoom in my page and expand it so you can see what I'm seeing, it just says theme picker in the top right corner. I've completely overwritten what that actual theme picker looks like. And the really nice thing about overrides is they make this incredibly easy. They have some documentation on exactly how to do it. And then they have this references section that tells you all the different props that you're going to be getting in. It also tells you every single component you can overwrite. And so if I wanted to search for my theme picker, I believe is what it's called. Actually, it's called something else. Let's see here, it's theme select. So if I wanted to find my theme select, come in here, I can click on this, and this is gonna bring me directly to the actual implementation on GitHub for this exact component. So I can copy and paste it if I only wanna change a few things, or another really nice thing about this is I can actually import the default version of this component. So if I scroll down a little ways in the documentation, you can see I can import the default version and I can use that and just add something on around it. So if I wanted, I could have that default version and then add something else on top of it. So if you wanna keep what you have before, you can do that as well. It's super easy to customize. Same thing with this, you can customize all the different CSS styles because pretty much everything is using CSS custom properties. So it's really easy to change just a few CSS variables to really define what the site looks like. On top of all that, there's full support for internationalization. They make it really easy to write your documentation in tons of different languages. As you can see, Starlight is built on its own tool of Starlight, and there's tons of different internationalizations of the documentation. So it's really easy to do that with fallbacks and everything else you can think of. Another thing I think is really interesting about Starlight is actually focus on the environmental factor of it by saying that essentially Starlight is all about being optimized and quick, which is kind of Astro's entire thing. So they really try to minimize the amount of power consumption, as you can see here, the amount of actual 
essentially CO2 per page visit for Starlight is much less than pretty much all of the different competitors out there, which is another really great thing. It's not as important for like smaller sites, but as your site starts to scale, this can be a factor that's really important to consider. Overall, I just wanted to share this with you because you can actually get started with some really easy and good looking documentation sites with almost no work on your end. All of this is just using the default built in components with no custom styling. So it can really look quite good with almost no work. And it's built on top of Astro, which is a tool that I absolutely love. My entire blog is built on top of Astro. I'll even link it in the cards and description for you can check it out. Astro is just incredibly quick, incredibly easy to use. And I absolutely love that they have their own documentation that you can use with this Starlight tool. So if you're trying to write some documentation, I highly recommend you check it out.